same thing. He takes the square of this plus the square of that, square root, he gets that. Will he get the same answer? Yeah, he'll get the same answer. Okay, so what changes is the x and y components of that point. But what doesn't change is the physical geometrical distance from there to there. Okay, now let's, so this is Euclidean geometry. <laughs> okay, now if we look at the Kronkian geometry, if it says space, space, we have space time. So if the blackboard represents space time, then we have Alice's, if Alice is at rest, her world line will be vertical like this. So this is CT according to Alice, and this is Alice's spatial axis. And if there's some event in her, um, in, in, in her space time, so this is an event, it happened at some location in space, say over here, and it happened at some time according to her watch, maybe up here. Okay, so there's the event right there. Okay, and so, and there's this. Uh, so this, two events, this event here, which happens at uh, x equals zero in her space, x equals zero on her watch, that's over here. And then there's an event which happens later in time at a different location along her x-axis. That's not an event. Okay, so we've got these two events over here. And as we said, what we can do is we can always find this event this event, we can always find a person drifting through Alice's space such that that event occurs at the same location. Okay, and that's Bob. So this was Steve's and Bob. So that event occurs right at his location. Uh, but at, between those two events, of course, time elapses for him. Okay, and so to figure out how much time elapses for him, pi is the physical distance in this in Alice's space time. What, we, what, do we, what do we do? Right, so we take the square of Alice's time, subtract the square of Alice's space distance, and take the square root, and that gives us that, that time, that physical time, according to uh, Boss Watch, how many seconds have you lasted on Boss Watch? Okay? And now, let's suppose that, okay, and then also we said, okay, where's Boss X axis? And we talked about this, and Boss X axis is, is up like this. Okay, so whatever tilt is here gives you his velocity. Okay, when he's moving uh, very slowly, the tilt is small, when he's moving faster, the tilt is more. Okay, and this is 45 degrees. Okay, and his time, whatever tilt his time axis has, is the same tilt for the spatial axis. So this is this, Bob. Okay, and as Bob approaches the seat of light, you'll notice the defense is crushed down like this, and they will become asymptotically parallel to that seat of light. Okay, now suppose there's some other event over here, happening, say, say over there. Okay, and we say, well, what, um, what is the amount of, if we find a third observer, say, Cleopatra? Okay, so now we've got, a, we've got this event and this event. Okay, that's this one, and this one. We find Cleopatra, a velocity for Cleopatra to move out such that those two events happen at her location. We have the same kind of question. How much time did you last on Cleo's clock between those two events? There are two ways we can do this. We can use, according to Alice and Bob, or sorry, according to Alice, what she would do is she would take this time squared minus this distance, this squared minus this squared, square root will give the time on Alice's, uh, sorry, Cleo's clock. Okay, and for Bob, what we would do is, this sort of thing, we would draw lines parallel to Bob's time axis. We're making a grid here. We'll draw lines parallel to Bob's time axis, and we'll draw lines parallel to Bob's x axis. The diagram's getting a bit messy, but... Okay, so instead of having a rectangular grid, it's, uh, it's a grid that's going to stretch down a little bit uh, like that. Okay, and so what he would do is say, hmm, uh, according to me, according to my time and my space, I would say that this event over here occurs I would just follow this line back to here and say, this is the amount of time we're talking about. And I would follow this guy back to my space axis, and I'll say, this is the amount of space involved. Okay, and so Bob would say, I would take this time squared minus this k squared, square root, and I would conclude that that's the amount of time. Okay, so we'll get the same amount of time as, as Alice did. Yes, and that's, that's the whole point. Okay, so time dilation and, as we'll see further, length contraction and so on, those are, are precisely the right amounts of contraction for time and space, so that Bob will get exactly the same answer as Alice can. When she takes this squared minus this squared, it'll be the same as this squared minus that squared. Okay, that requires time dilation like contraction. And at the end of the day, what it means is there's a geometry. Okay, so between any two points in space time, different people can make uh, measurements of the length of that path. And the length of that path is precisely just physically the time elapsed on a clock. Okay. Just as physical as laying down a meter stick here and saying, yes, I've got a physical meter stick connecting those two. You know, my S and Y components might change, but when I go X squared plus Y squared square root, I get the same thing. The physical length of that physical meter stick. The physical time elapsed on that physical ball. That field is just carrying with her. Okay, so, <clears throat> so space time has geometry. This is a hugely important uh, uh, lesson. And, and uh, this was an episode of by by Minkowski. And Minkowski was, was a teacher of life science, a professor of, a professor of life science. And um, he took high science physics and recognized that there's this mathematics behind it. Initially, Einstein thought, oh, who, who, that's just whatever, somehow, whatever, who cares? But then later on, he started to draw on in that. There is something really deep in that. The fact that space time has a geometry. You know, what if that geometry could be more? You know, and then Oscar comes up later, Oscar 10 years later, you know, he figures out that gravity is not related uh, to that curve, to the curvature of space time. All right, so, blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's actually take a look at this picture here. So let me rotate this a little bit. How do I rotate this? Okay, so let me just shut up a couple of these lights. Okay, this is what I'm 